Ben in Tacoma, Washington. He writes to me and he says, I have been getting tube curious. Ooh, I love that. That's great. But I'm afraid to take the plunge. It's okay. The water is fine right here. Um, I have the worst luck with electronic purchases. Mm, I'm sorry. Whenever I buy something new and shiny, something even newer and even shinier <laughs> always seems to immediately come out. Well, ain't it the way? I, got, I hate to tell you, Ben, it's a conspiracy. Looky here. These new 600s, um, see all this fancy stuff is measuring all that? These are new and shiny, and they're not even out yet. So <laughs> it's a conspiracy. We're out to get you. Um, in any case, um, so my question is, how much longer will it be before you think that tube amps will be replaced entirely by solid-state amps? Well, I think the fifth of never, and hopefully never, because there is a certain magic to vacuum tubes that's awful hard to beat. These amps, this is the new 600, BHK 600, vacuum tubes in the back, MOSFETs in the front. It's a perfect combination, and these are the original 300s. Same configuration. This one's just twice as big. It's a beast. I am not a big fan of vacuum tube output stages and their necessary output transformers. Never been a big fan of that, and if they vaporized, which is likely over time to happen because there's less and less interest in it, I could see that going on. But vacuum tubes as gain stages, vacuum tubes as input stages, that's hard to beat. I, I think I've told this story a few times. Years ago when Bascom BHK and, and Arnie um, kind of collected up on me, ganged up on me is a better way to put it, and, and said, you really need to have Bascom design an amp for you. And I said, I'd love to. I'd be honored to have Bascom. I mean, Bascom King is, is, is one famous guy, and he's one of the best designers in the world. And I mean, he's designed for Constellation Audio, Conrad Johnson, I mean, on and on and on. And Bascom's the man. And Bascom said, I would love to design an amp for PS Audio, but it's going to have a vacuum tube, or I don't design it. And I said, all right, I'll make you a deal. You prove to me that a vacuum tube can beat my best attempt with solid state, and the winner, whether it's me or you, is going to determine the design of the amp. And if you lose, you're designing the amp with my circuit in front or something else you want, and it's not a tube. And Bascom said, game on, buddy. And we did a big shootout. I mean, Bob Stather and I, our chief engineer, he and I came up with this, went into a tube socket, it was an extremely high voltage MOSFET input stage. It was, it was bitching. It was just the coolest stage ever. And it sounded amazing. It used 150 volts, because one of our theories has always been that vacuum tubes sound the way vacuum tubes sound because of their extreme high voltage. So vacuum tubes run on like 100, 200 volts, where solid state stuff runs on 20 volts, 30 volts, whatever. And the higher the voltage, the greater the linearity of the signal. So my theory was it isn't the glass bottle and all of that, it's the high voltage. And we built one and it sounded damn good, but the tube wiped its butt. And we did a blind AB. We had a tech back here, they were both in tube sockets. Same amp, same volume, same track. All right, he, we didn't know what he was doing and Bascom didn't know and I didn't know. Here's A, yep, here's B. Yep, let's go back to A. Yep, on and on. And at the end of the day, it was like, or whatever it was, B, you know. It, we all agreed, oh, B just wipes the floor. That was the tube. And from then on, we have had vacuum tubes in our input stage on our high-end fancy amps. And I don't see that going away anytime soon. Okay, thanks for the question.